G'day coaches, the Draft Monster here with another dose of AFL fantasy content for the upcoming 2023 season. Today we're talking about the guys who follow the ball up and down the ground and all around, the big accumulators, the midfielders. All of the lads in this video today are first or second round picks in your draft leagues and they are monsters of the sport. But some will go better than others this year, so without further ado, let's talk fantasy footy. Now I like to start these things off with a good old fashioned smoky and let me tell you, Noah Anderson could be a top 10 midfielder by the end of 2023. The third year breakout was real for Noah, adding 17 points to his previous best average of 81 to finish on a very impressive 98 from 21 games. But can he do it again this year? I honestly think he can. I'm getting serious Jackson McRae vibes about him. A 192 centimetre non-stop running machine midfielder with high centre bounce clearances, a beautiful left boot, a cohort of grunty on ballers to feed it out to him. Sounds pretty familiar. A high ceiling of 141 in 2022 and only going below a score of 78 on two occasions. He's already played 58 games in his first three seasons and I think it's time to really explode in 2023. So starting it off with a bit of a hot take, but Noah Anderson is going at an average of 107 or more this year. At number 9, I have Essendon Bomber Zach Merritt. Merritt has been a top 10 mid for a very long time. He is an absolute workhorse, averaging well over 100 every year for the past 7 seasons, including back-to-back -back monster averages of 117 apiece in 2016 and 17. Since then, he has always kind of floated around that 110 average mark. But I think what is equally as impressive as his scoring output is his durability. Since announcing himself as a real pig of the fantasy community in 2016, Zeret has only missed five games. Three of which were last year, where he suffered, suffered a syndesmosis injury in round two, only to miraculously cover three weeks later and play out the whole rest of the season. A season which had a couple of hiccups, with two scores in the 50s, but otherwise not going below a score of 86 and producing triple digit scores on 12 different occasions from his 19 games, including that ridiculous 172 in round 20. He's going to be good again this year, there have always been plenty of other bombers running through the midfield, but Zeret stands above them all and is one of the safest picks that you could ask for in the first round of your draft. Close to another 110 average this year, but I'm thinking 108. The fiery midfielder from the Melbourne Demons, Clayton Oliver, comes in as my 8th best man in the middle for the season ahead. Sporting the second best average in the AFL last year with 112.5 from 21 games played, there is no denying Clay Clay had an absolute blinder. Sporting 17 tons with a ceiling of 151 and only going one score below 87. Seriously big numbers in a consistent season. So, can he do it again this year? Well, I actually just don't see him going quite as big in 2023 and here is why. The only real difference in Oliver's 2022 performance and years gone past was his disposal count. He averaged 32.7 disposals a game last year and a lot of it came from getting the clearances in the middle. He had the most in the AFL last year with 201 and Clary averaged almost four clearances per game more than anyone else in the Demons lineup. Super, super impressive, but I just don't think it's sustainable. Even with a frightening Gorn Grundy combo, I think, I think Christian Petrarca and Jack Viney will be cashing in a lot more in the clearance work this year, add new recruit Lockie Hunter into the mix, explosive Angus Brayshaw with stints through the middle, young talent James Jordan might even get more of a go this year. I don't know, it just seems like a lot of mouths to feed. A little bit controversial maybe, but yeah, I reckon Clary will just generally have less disposals this year and thus he'll drop off a little bit and average what he's generally averaged in the years gone past and finish on about 108.
Tuke Miller is my 7th best midfielder for 2023. All aboard the Tuke train for another year. Once again in 2022, we saw Miller lead from the front for the Gold Coast Suns, averaging 109.8 from all 22 regular season games. Given it was a significant drop off from his 2021 campaign, where he finished with an average of 120, but Tuke still posted some serious numbers last year. He peaked early with a massive season high score of 147 in round 2 and ended up finishing the year with 15 tons, 6 of which went over the 127 mark. And if it weren't for a little blemish of 68 in round 3, Tuke would have averaged well into the 110s last year. So what is there to expect this year? Well for starters, look at him. This guy is jacked up and ready to go for 2023, he looks fit as ever and you just know he'll be that tackling and clearance machine we all know and love. Secondly, you can expect reliability from Miller. He's only missed one game in the past three years and in that time he has proven to everyone that he is one of the most professional and elite footballers in the competition. But lastly, and possibly the most important thing to remember this year, is the continuous emergence of the youth at the Suns. As previously mentioned, I am expecting massive things from Noah Anderson this year, will his mate Matt Rowell finally come to the party, recruits over the years in Charlie Constable, Jed Anderson are very used to seeing the ball at their respective clubs when they get some game time, there is a little untapped pig and Stewie Jew's least favourite person, Braden Fiorini also waiting in the wings for his next opportunity, and new draftee Bailey Humphreys also coming into the lineup. He's a ball hungry young talent as well. So there's just a lot happening. There's a lot of players looking for the ball at the Suns as they push for a finals berth this year. And I just think that is definitely something that could impact Tuke's numbers. So I'm thinking he stays around the 110 mark this year with an average of 109. Coming in as my 6th best midfielder for 2023 is last year's undisputed fantasy king Rory Laird. An average of 120.3 in 2022, Rory Laird had a year like no one else. His lowest score for the year was a 90 in his first game in round 3 after coming back from a hand injury, but after that it was an absolute riot. 16 tons from 20 games played, out of those 16 tons, 12 of those he went on to score 122 points or more. A high score of 163 in round 18 and he had a post buy average of 128.7. Just an absolute freak since Matty Nix chucked him into the midfield. So what's going on in 2023 for Rory Laird? Well, in my eyes, the same thing could happen to Rory Laird as it may do for Tuke Miller and Clayton Oliver this year, and that is the massive amount of opportunities for emerging or re-emerging talent at their respective clubs. Ben Keyes, Matt Crouch, Rory Sloan, Sam Berry, Jackson Haightley. All of these players are knocking or re-knocking at the door for playing more major midfield roles this year at the Crows and they have been in rebuild mode for quite some time now, and it would be silly not to expect a little bit more output from their young guys this year. So is that going to impact Laird's numbers? I actually really think it will this year, at least to some degree. But he is still a fantasy pig of the competition, and he will still run riot this year. Now that he is a full-time midfield bull, I'm just expecting a little bit of a drop-off and being a little bit cautious. I do feel like I'm going to get a little bit of hate for this one, but I am expecting Rory Laird to come back down to earth this year for an average of 110. Oh yes, Jackson McRae is coming back into the top 5 midfielders for 2023. The departure of Josh Dunkley and Lockie Hunter in the postseason leaves a little bit of a gap in the doggies midfield, but not really. There's still Bailey Smith, The Bunt, Adam Trelaw, Tom Libertore. It's pretty stacked with talent in there. But it is McRae who is the proven fantasy scorer amongst the lot. 
There is definitely an argument for Bailey Smith or Bont getting amongst it and going big this year, but if past performances are anything to go by, McRae is the main man getting the pill for the dogs in 2023. Between 2018 and 2021, McRae finished the seasons with averages of 122.6, 115.6, a 90.1, which was before COVID score of 112, and in 2021, 115.9, which is just insane. And to make it even more impressive, he hasn't missed a game in the last four seasons which in my opinion makes him the most reliable premium player in the competition. Last year, I think there were just too many guys running around in the middle of the dogs. McRae got pushed into the wing role at times. We saw the re-emergence of Josh Dunkley playing all 22 games for the first time in three years. Bailey Smith, Adam Trulaw and Tom, Tom Libertore all increased their workloads. And in turn, we saw big names like Bont and McRae fall behind their normal standards. But that was last year. In 2023, the midfield is wide open and I can see all the midfields getting a bit more of it this year. But it is Jack McRae who I believe is going to cash in the most. And he is one of the easiest picks in the first round of your draft. And I think he's going right back up there this season with an average of 112. The Man of Steel comes in as my fourth best midfielder for the new year, coming off a very nice 2022 average of 110.4. But after his insane season the year before, one can't help but think Jack Steele could have averaged even more in 2022. So let's have a quick look at how the year went for the Saints captain and why he will more than likely go bigger in 2023. Jack Steele was motoring early on last year, averaging around 110 and not going below a score of 98 in his first eight games. But it all came to a screeching halt when he copped a shoulder injury while on 77 in round nine and missed the subsequent four weeks of footy. He came back fitter than ever in round 15 and went on to average 118 for the next seven games. A little blemish in round 22 where he scraped in a nasty score of 65 against the hot Brisbane Lions was then counted the following week with a massive score of 139 against the Swans to cap it off for the year. So all in all, a couple of hiccups in an otherwise stellar season. When Steele is fit, he will be firing on all cylinders. Obviously he is the main man in the middle with the disposals for the Saints. His tackling game has always been his signature, an absolute beast of a tagger, but in recent years we have seen him find more space for the mark, which for a premium midfielder actually isn't as common as you might expect. Out of the noteworthy premium pure midfielders of the competition last year, only three others had more marks per game than Jack Steele. They were Callum Mills, Hugh McCluggage and Marcus Bontempelli. A string to an already formidable bow for Steele, so as far as all-round midfielders go, you really can't get more impressive or better than Jack Steele. He is primed for another massive year if he stays fit, and I can see him getting around an average of 114. Charging on into my third best midfielder spot is none other than official pig Tom Mitchell from the Collingwood Magpies. Is the pig breaking out of the pen again in 2023? I think yes. To the stupidly amazing heights of a few years ago, who knows? But you can be certain that Titch will want to get above and beyond the subpar standards he set for himself last year. Let's put 2022 in perspective for Titch. Last year, he would go on to play what would end up being his final year at the Hawthorne Hawks. And in that year, he was under the new coaching regime of debut season coach Sam Mitchell. No relation. Coach Mitchell, with an abundance of young talent and freshly drafted stars, decided to really embrace the rebuild mentality of coaching last year. We saw the emergence of Josh Ward, the ferocity of Jai Newcomb, and even small forward Dylan Moore eating up a lot more of the ball in the middle, and Titch's numbers took a dive. 
a man that we were so used to watching ton up around the third quarter of a game was now struggling to reach the triple digit mark at all. Given he did ton up 10 times last year, it just wasn't the titch we once knew. Fast forward one year, he is at the Collingwood Magpies, a traditionally fantasy friendly team, and by all accounts so far, the consensus is that Titch will be given the all clear to let loose in the middle in his new colours. Never forget, the man averaged 127 and 129 in his first two seasons at Hawthorne, 107 before COVID in 2020, and 115 in 2021 after coming back from a broken leg. And I just don't see why, after a couple of years of playing again, he can't get right back up there at his new club, and I think he's going for a nice spicy average of 115 again. Callum Mills comes in as my second best midfielder for the 2023 season after finishing with an average of 110 plus for the second year in a row. And just as equally as important is the fact that he also strung together a full 22 game season for the first time in three years with a few finals matches as well. A serious fantasy superstar these days, the main man in the middle and really just everywhere around the ground for the Swans. In 2022, Mills actually had three less disposals per game than he had in 2021, but it was his tackling and marking that improved significantly. He was 7th in average tackles per game and 19th in average marks per game last year. No other premium midfielder was in the top 20 in both marks and tackles per game last year. In fact, the next best marks per game rank of any pure premium midfielder last year was Hugh McCluggage and Marcus Bontempelli at ranks 83 and 84 and Jack Steele way down at rank 102 with 5 marks per game. Mills had some ridiculous scores last year, tonning up 15 times with 7 of those tons going past the 129 mark and a high score of 162. The only blemish for his season was, be, was a 54 in round 16 against the Bombers, where it seemed that they had learnt their lesson from their round 9 debauchery, where Mills took them to school for a massive score of 156. So without that little hiccup, Mills would have been very close to the second best fantasy scorer last year, right behind Rory Laird. And with a few more disposals this year, I can see him getting right up into that ultimate echelon of premium midfielders, and I really reckon he's going very, very big this year with an average of 116. Before I unveil my number one pick, here are a few honourable mentions. With the Brisbane Lions acquiring Josh Dunkley in the offseason, I believe he will be vacuuming up the ball in a similar way as to how he did at the Western Bulldogs, and subsequently players around him will suffer just a little bit, so I see Lockie Neal just being outside the top 10 mids again this year with an average of 106. Giant superstar Josh Kelly was a massive in games without Tim Taranto in centre bounces last year, so with Tim Taranto and Jacob Hopper out of the middle and off to the Tigers, I think Josh Kelly will be out for a massive year and getting close to a top 10 midfielder spot with an average of 106. And finally, I have Bailey Smith. The other doggy who could break away this year, some massive scores getting started last year, but just dragging off a bit as the season dragged on. He's just got that risk element about him, but you could easily see him being the best bulldog in the fantasy lineup as well if he does play 22 games. I'm just being a little bit conservative with him and thinking he'll get around the 105 mark again this year. All right, here he is, my number one midfielder for the 2023 AFL fantasy season, Andrew Brayshaw. It is obvious that Andy Brayshaw is already the man in charge at the Fremantle Dockers. All 22 regular season games played last year at an average of 112.4, Brayshaw averaged 17 more points than the next best player in the Fremantle lineup, Will Brody, who averaged 95. 
Brayshaw turned up 15 times, including both finals matches, and on 11 of those occasions, he passed the 120 mark. Before the bye last year, Andy was averaging a cool 118, which included a massive high score of 181. Yeah, 181. The highest score in AFL fantasy last season. Not bad for a guy who just turned 23 years old only a couple of months ago. He improved in almost every facet of his game last year, in particular upping his tackle count by one and a half tackles per game. He had an increased disposal output as well with a better kick to handball ratio, and he even kicked the ball between the sticks a bit more as well. Albeit, we did see a few off days from Andy Brayshaw after the bye, with two low scores of 78 and one score of 80. In two of those low scoring games, we saw Fremantle just get blown out of the water and the whole team suffered, and the other low score came in the Western Derby, where he did just get tagged out of the game by new arch nemesis Jackson Nelson. But to be honest, these low numbers from Brayshaw aren't even that bad and I feel like he can definitely bring that extra level of consistency to his game this year, bringing his floor score up just a little bit more. There are a few questions to be asked of the other lads running around in the middle with Brayshaw. Can Will Brody, Caleb Sarong and new recruit slash David Mundy's direct replacement Jaeger O'Meara find more of the pill this year? And does the new Sean Darcy-Luke Jackson combo help or hinder Brayshaw as well? Only time will tell. But once again, coming into the new season, I think it's pretty clear who the main man in the middle is at Frio moving forward, and I just think we're about to see a fresh pig on top of the fantasy ranking ladder this year. And I reckon Brayshaw is going right up at an average of 118 or beyond in 2023. And that is my top 10 AFL fantasy midfielders for the upcoming 2023 season. Do you agree with my picks? Let me know in the comments below and if you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and follow me on Twitter at DraftMonster for more fantasy content. Cheers.